Hey guys, it's Dana here from Minimal Baker, and today we are talking about how to make tofu taste good. Because if you don't try and make it taste good, it'll taste pretty bad. So first let's talk basics, and that is what kind of tofu to buy. So, you know, there's lots of different kinds of tofu anywhere from silken to extra firm. In this particular recipe, we're going to be using the extra firm tofu. And I always recommend buying organic and non-GMO whenever possible, just for best practices and best quality. Um, and you wanna get extra firm tofu because it has the most liquid pressed out of it already and it's super firm and thick. And that's, that's what's gonna give you that nice chewy texture in the final product. There are many different brands out there of tofu, of course, if you have the luxury of someone locally making it. Uh, I would go for that just because it'll be super fresh, but my two favorite brands are Wildwood and Whole Foods. So a common question is, do you need to press your tofu? And I would recommend yes, especially if you are looking for a nice kind of like firm, chewy texture at the end, which is what I prefer. And you can do that two ways. Uh, the first of which being simply opening up your tofu, draining out the water, wrapping it in a clean absorbent towel and setting something heavy on top. My preference is a cast iron skillet and just letting it sit and kind of let the water drain out for anywhere from 10 to 30 minutes. Usually 10 to 15 minutes is good. The other method is actually using a formal tofu press. I got this one on Amazon for I think about 10 bucks. It's really easy to use. You just slide your tofu inside, um, tighten the screws downward, and it presses the liquid out of the tofu, and you can catch that liquid on a towel so it doesn't drip on your counter. If it's your first time pressing tofu and you aren't quite sure what you're looking for, the general goal is not that the tofu block would be so dry there would be no moisture in it. It's just that there wouldn't be any moisture kind of like dripping out and it would feel firmer and uh, less moist. Next up is the method, and it's very simple to do, and I'm actually gonna show you two variations, but first, you're going to preheat your oven to 425 degrees Fahrenheit. Once your tofu is pressed, you'll just wanna remove it from its press or the towel and cut it into small cubes. So for this first variation, uh, we're gonna do like a curry spice tofu. It's very quick and easy. It's a little bit less uh, daunting than the other one. And all you're gonna do is heat a large cast iron skillet. I prefer cast iron because the tofu doesn't stick to it as much as say like a stainless steel. And once it's hot, you'll add a little bit of oil to the pan, add your cubed tofu, and then you're gonna season it with a nice curry powder. We have our recipe in a link down below, or you can just use your favorite store-bought. Next, you can add in a little bit of salt to taste and toss to coat, and then you're just gonna saute this on the stove top until all sides get a little bit brown, but not too dark. Next, you're gonna transfer your pan, it should be oven safe, to the preheated oven and bake for about 10 to 15 minutes until the tofu is nice and crispy and firm. This style of tofu is great for just about anything like salads, sandwiches, wraps, or my favorite, any flavorful curry. This second variation is for crispy peanut tofu, which is my personal favorite. And all you're gonna do is line a baking sheet with parchment paper. Once your tofu is cubed, you're gonna add it to the parchment lined baking sheet and add it to your preheated oven where it will bake for anywhere from 20 to 25 minutes. You're essentially looking for the tofu to get nice and golden brown. It should feel firm to the touch, maybe a little bit bouncy, but it should definitely be browned on all sides. And while the tofu is baking, you're gonna make a quick and simple peanut sauce. To a medium mixing bowl, you're gonna add some sesame oil, tamari, and light brown sugar, or you could also sub agave or honey or maple syrup here as well. Next, you're gonna add a little bit of chili garlic sauce, some peanut butter, almond butter, or your favorite seed or nut butter, as well as a squeeze of lime juice. Then you're just gonna whisk to combine into a sauce, and typically I add a little bit of water here until it's a thick but pourable sauce that will easily coat the tofu. So once your tofu is nice and crispy and brown, you're gonna remove it from the oven and add it to your peanut sauce. Toss to coat and let it marinate for about 10 to 15 minutes. You could also do this ahead of time and let it marinate in the refrigerator um, up to one to two days in advance. And to finish this off, you're just going to heat a large skillet. We prefer cast iron again. Once it's hot over medium heat, you're gonna add a little bit of sesame oil and add your tofu. You can add the tofu with most of the sauce or reserve a little bit of sauce for serving. Saute, stirring occasionally for a few minutes until all sides are nice and golden brown and crispy. 
And lastly, you'll just remove it from the pan and set aside to keep warm until serving. This peanut tofu is so delicious on many dishes, my favorite being our noodle-free pad thai, but you could also add it to just about any curry or delicious things like spring rolls as well. And that's it, crispy, delicious tofu two ways. Of course, there are many different flavor variations you can do, but these two are my absolute favorite. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe, and we'll see you next time, friends. Bye.